in, but we're good to go. We are recording. You guys, welcome to the Punta Cana, like, I guess, what, what are we calling this? Recap Zoom. Is that Jackie? Yes, this is Jackie. I'm so excited, you guys. My name is Jackie Deering. I'm a presidential diamond from Canada, currently living in Mexico. And you guys, I just cannot wait to take a couple minutes and tell you my biggest recap from this amazing trip that we're on. And I want to start off by saying that um, you know, I've been with this business for five and a half years, and I have been lucky enough to have been on a couple of these trips. And I don't think I've ever left more fired up than I left this trip. And, you know, there are so many amazing things about it. Uh, I think one of my favorite thing was just, you know, after this crazy couple years that we've been in, seeing people, hugging people, like, like feeling people's energy. But one of the biggest takeaways that I've had from this trip and something that I think a lot of people need to hear is that. Can we, can we like remember that building a business on social media, we see the highlight reel. Does anybody ever feel like they're building their business and they feel like they're the only ones going through something? Drop a one if that's you. You're like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm going through the struggle, something in my business, maybe something personally, something that's just happening in your environment. And you're like, I feel like I'm the only one, right? I know that I've been there many times in my business and I look around and like you see people building this business on social media and you compare, right? You're like, they must not ever go through that or they must never have these hard struggles or these hard times. You know, when I got to this event and I'm, you know, literally it was 800 people just like it, it was an it works party, okay? And, you know, obviously you're, you're connecting with people and you're, and you're talking with people and you really get to see the other side of the business when you're in person. And by that, I mean, not the highlight reel. And I think it's important that we're not just seeing the highlight reel because that is where the reality lies. And I think what we need to realize, no matter where you are in your, in your business, is that success is not always rainbows and butterflies, okay? I don't know if anybody has ever read the book Winning by Tim Grover, but basically it talks about, you know, you can look at people that are successful. Maybe you're looking up to somebody that's won the trip or that's been on these events or a top leader or whatever it is, someone that is just getting results and you're like, I wanna be them or I wanna, I wanna get those results too. But we look at winning or success as this, feel, it's like this sexy feeling or it's this, you know, it's, it's this, you know, put on a pedestal or it's this, um, you know, this, this glamour, right? And what I realized talking to people, people that have gone through the ringer, people that have hit mountaintops, hit the valleys, and they're still there and they're persevering is that winning is not necessarily sexy. It is the, like, if you ever meet somebody that's, that's a winner, that's done anything great, whether it's a network marketing or business or sports or whatever it is, like, that winning is sometimes those not good feelings that, that you have to go through that you're like, man, I would have never expected that. It's the self-doubt. Who's ever had self-doubt in this business? It's the self-sabotage. It's the feeling of like not being qualified. It's the hurdles. It's the setbacks. And so what I realized being there, you know, not being in an event in so long and hearing people is like, man, these people are not ones that have not gone through the struggle. They're not people that have not dealt with adversity. It's they're the people that have gone through these things and persevered. And I think the hardest part about working on social media is we get so quick to, to think that that's not the case, right? That it must be easy for this person because they're in this situation or they haven't dealt with this or they haven't gone through this. And so as we've talked, as I was talking to people and, you know, hearing people that are so successful, making insane money with this business, doing amazing things, I realized they've gone through the struggle. And so how do you go through the struggle and end up on the other side? Well, that's the, that's the tip that I want to give you guys today, because I feel like in this business, you're going to go through peaks. You're going to go through valleys. Anything that is worth having in life is not going to be easy. It's not going to be a walk in the park. It's not going to be this like straight shot to success. And I really believe that every single person at that event was a champion and a champion, let me tell you, is not made on the mountaintop. It's just not a champion, a winner, a successful person is made in the valley. What do you do in the moments of defeat? What do you do when you're not feeling it? What do you do when it's not easy? What do you do when there is a lack of discipline? So I just took a couple quick notes of what I wanted to share. I know we got like five to six minutes each, so I'm going to be really quick. If this is you, if you are feeling this right now and you're like, listen, I'm ready to up my game. I'm ready to get to the other side. OK, drop a one if that's you, by the way, who is ready to up their game. We are so close to the end of 2022. We're about to go into 2023. And I know that if I want 2023 to look different than it does this year, we have to be willing to act different. So the first thing that I want you guys to realize that success 
is actually built on little small habits. Okay. So many people think that success is a, is a sprint. And you guys know what I realized a sprint is not sustainable. Success is those micro habits over and over and over and over again. We habitually do that build to bigger results. Now, the problem with small habits is in the moment, it doesn't feel like we're moving forward, right? It is very easy to, to be like, man, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, and I'm not getting the result, our emotions get in the way. What I realized was the people at this event, they were just, they're, they're habitual. They're the little actions every single day over time that is built up. So what I want you to do today, if you're ready to take to the next level, you're ready to not miss the next event, is I want you to ask yourself, what is that small habit that I need to do? And I think for a lot of us, it's just committing to a daily list. You know, when I walked around that event and I'm picking people's brain, what are you doing? How are you getting results? Where are your, where is your customers coming from? Where is your DTs? Where is your duplication coming from? Can I tell you guys, it's not one thing. It's not one message. It's not one post. It's not one action. It is the small things every single day. Who is calling me? Nobody ever calls me. So I'm not really sure what's going on. Let me just close that. Um, it's the small things every single day that add up. Right. And so if, if this is you, you need to you need to have the daily list. What are the small things every single day that you are willing to do over and over and over again? And you guys, let, here's the other thing. Success does not have a, a finish line right? Success is not a finish line. I know that this is a long-term game. Why? Because you know what else is long-term? Your bills. You know what else is long-term? The fact that your kids are going to want to have, you know, whatever it is that you're looking them to do, put them, putting them in private school, doing whatever, putting them in sports, like this is long-term. And so I realized that these, that everyone there that is successful is very much just like doing the things over and over and over day, over. Okay. So what are the little habits that you can do over and over again to set yourself up for success. Now, what you're going to realize is that these daily tasks, these small things that you're doing, okay? And guys, really, it's like we post, we grow our network, we follow up, we talk to people. It's in those four categories. Now, when you are when when you get into the habit of that when you're consistently doing it you have to realize that your results will compound they're going to piggyback and you know what happens as people say like hey i've been doing tiktoks i've been doing reels i've been doing half your confidence will build as you stay committed to these goals okay as you stay committed so stay committed to the process stay committed to doing this over and over and over again and i have to i just have to say like the things that you're willing to do need to be a longer list than the things that you're not willing to do right? Like you need to be willing to do more than you're not willing to do. And it has to be a whatever it takes attitude. Like what will take you out of the game? Okay. Now, the last thing that I realized my biggest takeaway from this trip was the people that are successful very much control their time. Okay. Now, one of the things that I heard was like, Hey, we all have 24 hours in a day who right now feels like they just don't have time to be successful in this business. They just don't have the time, right? Put it to you. I don't have the time. I'm too busy. I'm too this. I'm too that. We hear it all the time. Do you guys know that we literally all have 24 hours in a day? Time is the only thing that we can't slow down, back up, reverse, fast forward. We all have 24 hours in a day. And what I know is there were people there that I was blown away that they found success in this business because I was like, dang, you have that life. You have like seven kids or you work this many jobs or you're doing all these things and you still made it here. So what I've realized is it's not about what we have time for. It's what we have to prioritize. And I realized that people are spending so much time doing busy work. Like just to keep yourself busy to say that you're working. Get yourself a daily list, get very consistent with the actions that you take over and over and over again. And the last thing I'll say before I pass it off to Mariah is your vision needs to be strong. You need to know exactly why you're here. Okay. And one thing that I realized when I started this business, and I think it really got me emotional, you know, when you find who, you know, who, who here has like found success They've hit this, they've hit their goal in this business, right? Like you come in to make 500 bucks a month, you hit that goal and you have to redream, right? You have to re, you have to redream because you're like, I hit it. When I came into this, it wasn't necessarily what I wanted that drove me. It's what I did not want in my life anymore. I was driven by the pain of what I did not want anymore. And eventually that led me to the vision of like why I was here. So I just really believe that if you want 
to grow and you don't want to miss this next event, just know that you have every single thing inside of you that it is required to be successful. Every single thing that you need. You're not too late. You're not too, you're not too anything. Like you literally have everything inside of you. Stop telling yourself that you don't, because I promise you every single person at that event probably never thought they were going to come in and be a top earner or beat this event. Like it's just such, it's just crazy. Like when you actually meet these people and you're just like, wow, you're just so normal, but you need to realize that they just know why they're here. And they, I don't know about you, but like I've spent so much of my life counting myself out. What happens if you just for once say, I, I deserve this. I am worthy of this and stop focusing on all the reasons why you can't and get very clear on the reason that you can. So anyways, this trip changed my life. I was so happy to meet so many of you guys and I'm just ready for 2023. There is so much coming. I'm telling you guys right now, if your feet are not in the game, you need to get in the game, but I will be quiet because I'm just excited. So Mariah, I have Mariah up next. Please tell us what was your biggest takeaway from Punch Canada? And I think I'll have to probably unmute you so let me see if i can find you there we go okay ask on you i'm gonna spotlight you and hopefully i can find you <laughs> perfect there we go awesome thanks so much jackie girl you are killing it i feel so hyped just after listening to you um so typically when i go into these events i love to take the week or two before and really pray over my business and pray over what i need at this event. And you guys, this is the first event. I did not do that. Okay. I had my daughter five months ago. Um, she's my first. So I'm right now trying to figure out how to be a mom and do life, not just be a mom and do this business, but even do life. And I feel like I'm drowning everywhere. So I went into this event really just tired. I was so tired physically. I was tired emotionally. I'm tired mentally. I'm tired of my business. I'm tired of my marriage. And I just went tired. I really had no expectations. I just went. Okay. And I think that it finally took me being so just worn down and tired to hear what I needed to hear about my business. Um, I had such an impactful conversation sitting down with Manisa and Ryan, and I was telling them about some goals I had and where I wanted to go. And Lanisa, if you guys know her, she's going to shoot it straight. I love her so much for it. And she looked at me in the face and she said, Mariah, you're not ready for that. I was like, okay, um, I'm not used to being told no. And I really, really don't like it. And so I was like, what do you mean I'm not ready for it? Like, I'm hungry. I'm a red personality. I work really hard and I'm going to do whatever it takes. What do you mean I'm not ready for it? And she said, Mariah, you don't have the right foundation. You can do everything you want, but you're never going to get there because you can't do it alone. And I've known this my whole business. I know that I'm stuck and plateaued and I'm feeling the way I do because I haven't built a foundation. And I think it was just, I finally broke down enough and I was tired enough that I really accepted that. And so I was like, okay, how do we get there then, right? How do we build that firm foundation? And, you know, they just kind of brought it back full circle of we get so caught up in the numbers, right? We love to mass enroll. I don't know about you guys, but I started tying my identity to mass enrolling. I wanted three distributors a month. I wanted six distributors a month. I wanted nine distributors a month, whatever that was. And Melissa looked at me and she said, Mariah, you don't need 30 distributors. You need three. That's it. This business is built on three distributors, your core three, that firm foundation. And sometimes we get so caught looking and for the next one, the next one, the more, the more we forget to love on those ones that we have because we're trying to find a good leader to come into our business. The guys, leaders don't join your business. Leaders are developed within your business. And so if we're not taking the time to develop those leaders. We're going to keep staying in the same dang cycle. And so we've got to find those people to build that foundation. And so the first thing to do is first, you've got to identify what you want and what you stand for. What do you want your team to be? This is something I did forever ago in my business. I was sitting at the last in-person green conference or yeah, green carpet, which was like forever ago. And I remember sitting there and it just kind of hit me if I want to identify what I want my team to stand for. And I wrote down things like, we're going to be the hands and feet of Christ. We're going to give so much in this company. We're going to be the first ones to volunteer and to stand up. We're going to be one team, one mission and things like that. I identified 
who I was going to be and who we were going to be. You can't create a foundation if you don't have the floor plans for the house. You've got to know what you're looking to build to start making that foundation. And then next, you've got to have the who. Guys, if you're going to go apply to a job, they're not going to hire everyone. So why are we hiring everyone that hits submit instead of looking for people with the right criteria? We're literally going and like asking, you know, some Valerie to be a hairdresser and I'm expecting her to do amazing work on day one when she's never cut a piece of hair. We're setting ourselves up for failure and then we're setting up our potentials to disappoint themselves and us. And so I was talking to Ryan and we were talking about how do you start finding those people, right? Because I don't know about you, but I don't want to sit down and interview people. Like I, that just feels weird to me. I don't want to ask you 72 questions and make it feel like an interview. I want to grow relationships. And so we started talking and he started grilling me in, in that conversation, the simple things. Like I just read an amazing John Maxwell book. Have you ever heard of John Maxwell? If they say yes, they do personal development. Check. That's something I'm looking for. My company, they just sent me on this incredible trip to Punakana. Have you ever been to the Dominican? If they say yes, or if they start talking about another trip, boom, they like travel. Check. I've got a five-month-old who refuses sleep, okay? Like she's up every two hours. Have you ever been through this? Like, do you have any tricks to maybe help me get my sanity back? If they start talking, they're a mom. Boom. Check. Just like that, I'm taking the time to get to know people and at the same time, developing my core, finding out exactly if they're going to fit within my organization and my vision of where we're going. It's so simple, guys, to start really cultivating that. And we've got to remember that in this business, we've got to focus on the relationship. If we're not taking time to get to know people, you're not going to have the business you're looking for. You can never hustle your way to the top. I'm sorry. That's something that I know may sting because it stung me because I'm no, like, I have no shame in my hustle game. I'm willing to do the work, but you can never hustle your way to the top. You've got to love your people there. And that's how we're going to do when we bring it all back to focusing on that relationship, loving your people in, taking the time to get to know them beforehand, and then even more so once they're in your organization. That's how you're going to really build that foundation within your business. Once you solidify that, guys, you're three. It's going to take you all the way to the top. Dang, that was so good. Yeah, leaders really are built. I love this so much, you guys. This is so good. Thank you so much, Mariah. That was awesome. And you're just amazing. So thank you for sharing. And okay, now we are bringing on Caitlin. No, Courtney. I think I'm other, I'm thinking backwards. Courtney Van Ocken. And you know what, you guys, I was trying to get her autograph the whole time in, in Dominican. She never gave it to me. So I'm, I'm a little salty about it. So I, I might just keep her muted, but okay, here we go. Courtney, I loved seeing you and hanging out with you. You're amazing. What was your biggest takeaway from this event? Yeah, so out of the 800 people that went, some of us got came back and are a little sick. So you guys have to bear with me for like getting this cold. But now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, this is all of that like energy, the negative energy, the like the everything that held, held me back that Mariah was just talking about. I feel like it's just all coming out <laughs> of my pores. That's what I'm going to just say. That's what I'm going to claim right now that I'm like laying the foundation for something new. And it's crazy that eight, out of 800 people, I had almost the same exact conversation with Ryan multiple times that Mariah just did. And I'm sure Jackie has had as well. So this is really, really, really good stuff because if you keep hearing the same thing, over and over and over and over again, it's important, right? And then eventually it sticks. Eventually it just completely clicks. For me in my business in the last six years, your story and your why was always the first thing that you were asked when you got signed up, right? What did your enroller say? Like, why did you get started with this business? And you sat there and you probably just said, extra money, right? And then maybe that enroller was like, hey, let's go a little bit deeper. Let's talk about what you actually want this for because what's that extra money gonna do for you? Right. So right now, guys, tell me your why in the chat. Like, why are you here? Your why is always going to change. And guess what? As your why changes over and over and over and over again, your story keeps developing. So even when you're brand new in this business and you don't have your own story yet, Ryan was saying to us that that's when you can use your enroller story. That's when you can share someone else's story to talk yeah. about because it's so, so powerful. 
right? So over and over and over and over again, we have our own stories, we have our own whys, and we keep changing them based on what we truly want for our future. And honestly, now my why is so much more impactful than it was six years ago when I started. So even going into this trip, right? I had no idea what to expect, kind of like Jackie and Mariah said, I was like, like not no idea what to expect, but I knew that if I heard the same thing more than once from a bunch of different people, that is something that I wanted to take note of. I am not a person to take notes. I'm always go with the flow, but since I'm not feeling so great, I wrote some things down just so I can make sure I like should tell you guys this because this is really important stuff. These people on this call tonight that you're listening to, that you're hearing from are all top income earners in the company, right? So if you want to be in the same exact spot next year when we have another trip, because they just announced that we're going to be having another trip, we have no idea where yet. But if you want to be there, drop a two in the chat. I want to know who's coming with us because every single person speaking on the Zoom is 100% going to be there, right? Because we all made the intention a long time ago that we're going to take our business seriously and treat it like a business. So a big part of sharing our business is that decision where we go from, hey, I'm not just a salesperson, right? I can sell ice to an Eskimo, right? You know, you heard that saying, right? I'm sure a lot of people come to this business saying, I'm not a salesperson. I don't know how to sell anything. There's totally opposite sides of the spectrum. We are honestly, if, if you really think about it, yeah, we have products. Yes, we have a business opportunity, but we are in a relationship business. So the key to success in anything you do is building relationships. So that happens by sharing your story every day, right? Like Ben Mariah was just talking about getting loud, getting proud about it, talking about what you want. When you're on your actual Instagram and Facebook story, like, you know, the function that you can actually talk on your story every day, I want you to talk to one person right? Just like how Mariah said that you're talking to that person. And then eventually you just find out that they love to travel because you talked about going to the Dominican Republic. Talk to one person. Someone wrote in the chat while she was saying that, how do we do that? Like, how do we even start that conversation? How would you go call up your friend right now on the phone, right? A longtime friend that you talk to, you know, once a week or once a month, how do you start that conversation? So how do you go on your story every day? How do you go on your page? How do you go through your content every day? approach it as one person. I have made the mistake, honestly, for a while of talking to multiple. I always say, Hey guys, Hey friends. I'm talking to all these people, right? On my story. When it's just me talking to a screen, no more, not after this trip, I've learned from so many people and so many different trainings that talking to your ideal person that you want to join your team or that ideal person you want to become a customer in your business is going to be that completely deciding factor. Cause you decided to become a relationship person right? You're in a relationship with say network marketing. So you have to actually be networking with that one person versus just sales versus just trying to slay your coffee on your story every day, right? Instead, you're having that conversation with that one person. And it's kind of funny how things happen all around the same time for me in my life. I don't know if you guys drop a three, if you feel this, whenever you like see a car that you want, you see it like a million times, right? Cause it becomes something that's just in your head. So whenever Brett, Brett and I have this happen a lot, we were just talking about a, a certain person like, oh my God, I love that, blah, blah. And then here they come walking around the corner in Putsakana. It happens all the time. Whenever we start talking and attracting the energy to the things that we want, it happens. So before I left for Putsakana, I prepped training for my team. And I prepped training for my team for the days that I wasn't going to be there because I wanted them to have something that they could learn and grow with to be successful. And I had five days of training and I called it five keys to success. And it was number one, five keys to success. Number one is your story, right? So every single day, share your story, write this down, share your story, share your story, share your story. Even if you're new, share someone else's story. Okay. Until you have your own number two consistency, Jackie just said it, <laughs> right? She's literally just said every single person she talked to has a habit and a daily task list. So yes, consistency, find out what you can be consistent in every single day and make it a priority. Number three is actually the action behind it. So yes, you can make a list. You could probably have 20 to-do lists right now on your phone, but it's the action piece of actually doing it every day that's gonna get you the results. Number four is your mindset because you could do anything. And if you are talking about how no one's gonna want this, no one's gonna post, post a post for you, no one's gonna add you as a friend, no one's gonna watch your TikToks. If you have that mindset, no one's gonna do it because if I'm watching you and I can already tell that's what you're thinking in your head, your energy portrays it in your body language. And just the way you talk and just the way you type and those periods who puts O period K period. Like, okay, I know you're mad. You just typed like 20 periods. Right. But no, for real, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to tell you like your energy transfers in everything that you do. 
So approach every single day with the mindset you want to be successful. Every person I talk to in the Dominican Republic, every person I surrounded myself with in the pool for hours on end every single day was a positive, happy person who has intentional goals and goes after them and crushes them. And even if they hear the word no, even if they feel like, like they can't do it at that moment, like Mariah just heard from Lanessa, like maybe she didn't have the right, mo the right moment for that to happen right now. But guess what? You know what she said right away when she said, heard that? Oh, I'm going to get better and I'm going to make it happen then. Just watch me. Just watch me. Right. So say, just watch me and say, what's next? That's the mindset you have to have in building any business ever. And then number five was community. So I put these keys out. Right. And I was just like, okay, let me just think about five keys that I've been successful with. And the last one was community. I talked about how these Zooms and getting on these trainings is so important. And then we had the event in person in Punta Cana. And I started thinking about my own story. And I started thinking about when I was 20 years old and I went to Punta Cana for the first time in college and my mindset of finding the cheapest resort and being able to budget for whatever activity I wanted to do. And just hopefully I could stay for seven days and not have to go to that part-time job with the bank or whatever the heck. I, I don't even remember what I was doing there because I was in college, but I was honestly budgeting my time and budgeting my finances. Then what, what? 13 years later, I'm 33 now, 33 years old. I go to Punta Cana with a completely expenses all paid trip from our company. How has things changed for me? That's insane to think about that. I was worried about taking off time from that part-time job and finishing my college degree and trying to stay at a $50 a day of resort. And then we stayed at a five-star resort paid for by our company with something that I decided just to do on a whim. When I saw Melissa who's speaking tonight too, post on Facebook. Right. I literally just saw her post on Facebook one day. I had no idea who the heck this girl was, but I said, I'm just going to try it out. Why not? And then guess what? I got to go back to the Dominican Republic on a whole nother level, just like our company is all about. So just thinking about that is so powerful. And honestly, that, that story, I haven't told anyone until right now. And I'm going to start sharing that story more. And I bet you, I'm going to have people that have gone on spring break to college and they're older now. And they're like, heck yeah, I'm joining you. So I can go next year to the next trip. And I wrote down this quote I saw on Google actually today, but it was perfect for what I just said. Your story is the key that can unlock someone else's prison. Like that's freaking powerful, right? Like think about that for a second. You being vulnerable enough to share your own story, can someone else can read that? Like when I saw Melissa in Thailand and I saw her talking about like having time because now she works from her phone and like all these things, she was living on the beach with her dogs. It unlocked my prison of thinking I was never even going to be more than a person that sat behind a desk at a nine to five job. Like it unlocked a prison of thinking that, wow, like there's actually good, like hanging out with people in Punta Cana in this company. When you get on these Zooms and these trainings and you're around all this fire, you realize that there's actually freaking good people in the world. And there's a good company out there. And there's a, there's people who actually want the best for you. That unlocks the prison for so many people who think that they're just born to fail and they're born to be surrounded by negative energy their entire life. So you getting loud about your story. And even if you're scared or uncomfortable and you step out of your comfort zone and do it anyway, think about how many people you're going to take out. And Jade wanted me to share really quickly. And I almost forgot because I'm going to pass this over. Um, we got a new product coming. So if you guys want to see what the bottles look like of the oils, <laughs> this is the product that we are getting shortly. There's restore calming and nourish. So this isn't the actual labels. I don't think because it says Sela V on it, but you can see the bottles and how cute they are. But I wanted to end with that. Thanks guys. Courtney had to swan dive over a group of people to get those. I witnessed it. Swan dive. Boom. Just joking. Dude, that was fire. You are amazing. And I just really like when I hear like you're where you focus, like you see where you stare. It's so true. And I think that just so many people need to hear that. So thank you, dude. I love you. I was so happy to meet you. Now we got Caitlin up next. So let me ask you to unmute uh, and then just start talking. <laughs> I'll, fi I'll find you to re replace the spotlight. Uh, Hi. Okay. There we go. Can you hear me? We're good. Okay. Hi. Hi. Okay. So I'm like super honored to be a part of this crew. And I kind of want to talk to the people that maybe don't think that like they're quite here yet, or maybe like you're the girls that are sitting in the back of conference yet. And like, you want to believe that you can be up there and you want to believe that you're the same. And you want to believe that like, it's here for you too. But like, you're just not totally sure. Like, can I say that I'm talking for y'all? Because Seven years ago, I was a stay-at-home mom, not making any money, completely broken and flawed and depressed. And like 
saw this girl posting on social media saying that she was paying for things. And like, there was this undeniable pull, even though I was so skeptic and so scared to like show people that what Jackie was saying that like my highlight reel wasn't real. I was so scared. There was this undeniable pull that I was meant to be here and that I was meant to do this. And like, there was just something like, like the Lord literally just like separated everything in life and was like, you're supposed to be here. And I joined before I was ready and I joined that I was scared. And then to spend the last week in Punta Cana with people I have never felt more like myself. I have been told that I'm too much, that I'm too loud or too excited or too whatever. And then you go around and you're like, actually, I'm not. And all of the things that you may have felt that aren't good enough in your life are actually what makes you qualified to be extremely successful here. And so whenever... Mark was talking about, and people were talking about finding their home. I just got so emotional hearing corporate speak because I am home here and I have belief and I'm a big believer, but there was like, like somebody just, I mean, the belief is just like pumping out of me since coming home. And I realized that, you know, I say I do the things and I do the daily six and I have enrollments and I'm showing up, but I became very robotic in the things that I was doing and I was doing to get results. And I got away from being who I was. And when I went to Pujacana, the biggest thing that I've left with is that I have to be me. I have to be me. I have to speak. I got to be yellow. I'm going to talk with my hands. I'm going to, I'm going to give you a hug. We're going to have personal conversations. I want to hear about your struggles and I want to know about your weaknesses because I want you to know that you're not alone. And so I have come back wiping the slate of scripts and things. I'm not saying that scripts are bad, but like, y'all, I haven't sent a script since coming home. I voice message. I'm talking to people. I'm telling people you need the products that we have. And I have this idea right now that like, why aren't, why isn't everybody doing this? Like why, what we have our hands on and what we are capable of in this business and what we have the opportunity and the blessing to do in this business. Why is not everybody doing it? And there is just this idea. You look around and you see every kind of person you see every kind of person and you're like they're doing it why can't you and you just realize that everybody is a normal person behind their screen doing the things and 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 what i've also learned talking to so many people is that I get this idea that it's easy for people or like success is easier. Once you reach a certain point, like it becomes easy. Y'all, it's not easy for anybody. And every single person that was at Sea La Vie and every single person that's talking tonight works so hard at their business and they continue to address themselves and they continue to not point the finger at anybody else when things aren't going their way. They continue to address themselves and pivot and then pivot again and then figure it out and then pivot it again. And I feel so confident in who I am as a person that I, I I don't even know how I even got here. Like I know that I take steps every single day for my business. And I learned this in church that like, sometimes, you know, who asks God, like, I want to know my potential, right? Like God, give me my potential. Show me what I'm here for. What am I here for? And I heard in church that you don't just like reach your potential one day. You reach your potential by doing the things every single day. And eventually that's what unlocks your potential and you find yourself where you're supposed to be. And so it's not, you don't have to like have the secret sauce or the perfect message or the perfect body or the perfect Instagram or the perfect Facebook to get the people that are going to unite to become this amazing team that like not only changes their own lives, but creates ripples of change to create other people's lives. You just have to show up every single day and you have to be willing to believe before the evidence is there. And I think some of us get lost in the sauce when it comes to that. And they, we look at these other people and we feel like we need to imitate these other people and we can success leaves a trail and you can take bits and pieces, but I am encouraging you right now to know that the fact that God brought all of us together in this same place at the same time is not by accident. And there is room for every single one of us. And there are voices that are meant to be heard. And I am so encouraged to find those people that are willing to step outside the box, to look at something like this, to make an extra income. And I'm ready to hear their story. I have had, I've talked to 
four people on the phone since coming home from Puchicana as potential distributors. No more send a script. Okay, send them up, send them through my site. Let me talk to you. I just got off the phone with the girl from Michigan. She's like, I'm so scared. We had a great conversation. My husband got involved. He was like, listen, I thought this was crazy when she first started. And we're doing it. We're now as a team. My husband went with me to Punta Cana. And it was like the most bonding experience that we have ever had as a couple to experience this together for him to see what I've seen for years. Jim's vision has been set. Like he's, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's Mark Pentecost's biggest fanboy now, like hands down. But as a couple, and we're realizing that God put us here for a reason to impact, to have conversations. I will never forget the conversations that I've had in Punta Cana, the kind of connections that I've had, what I was able to say, and people were shaking their head like, yes, I hear that. And then I was doing the same thing. It is amazing when you surround yourself with people at a high level, you just step up. There's no other way to go except stepping up. And I'm so appreciative of the time and the amount of knowledge that was poured into me just from people telling me what they do on an everyday basis and finding similarities between everybody that it's like, I am meant to be here. I am worthy of this. I counted myself out for a really long time. I will never do that again because I learned that teams follow good or bad. And I learned that I need to listen. I need to listen to people. I need to listen to my distributors coming in so that I can train them. We all want runners. We all want people to come in and take their own business into their own hands and develop and build and be happy and confident. But we those we find that by listening. When we listen to our distributors, we find out what they're struggling with, what their weaknesses are, what their insecurities are. And then we can love and nurture on them. And that allows people to know that you believe on them. And I'm telling you that this company cares so much about people, like the ripple of change that comes from you saying yes, and you being bold enough and vulnerable enough to be yourself and then put it out there for people is something that nobody can ever take away. And when you teach people how to be a good, like not teach people how to be a good person, but to be raw and authentically themselves, their potential is unlocked and they start to see and become who God created them to be. And if we have one ounce of that, like one ounce to be a part of that, that's what this business is. It's bigger than a paycheck. It's bigger than a title. It's bigger than a rank. And I am overwhelmed with the amount of culture and, and worldliness and, and kindness that is just poured into us from our corporate and from other people and what people are willing to share that I am just, I, I, it's almost like I was just given permission to be myself and to show people who I am so that they can be themselves too. And I am set on fire and I am ready to like enroll every single person that I speak to and let them know that like, oh my gosh, you can just like, you can do it. Like I just, I, for everybody to be changed, even if it's a hundred dollars, $200, $500, I don't care. Like when you show people that they actually can, this is so much bigger than us. And we are so fortunate to be in this place. I looked at none of my notes, but my time is up. So I <laughs> relatable. Caitlin, I'm done. Thank you for sharing that. Like that just, I don't know you guys to drop a three. If that just gave you chills, like permission to be yourself. Somebody needs you to show up as you are. So it gives them permission to know it's okay too. And I just related to what you say, you know, I'm too, I'm too this. I'm too, whoever feels like they're too much. I'm too loud. I'm too this. I'm too, I'm not enough of this. Like, Oh my gosh, everything that you just said was so good, dude. Thank you so much. And it was so awesome meeting you. You're amazing. And I'm just so inspired by everything you just said. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, next up, you guys, we have Christina. And I just saw you on the screen. Oh, there you are. I found you. Asked to unmute. I am so excited to hear from you. Please share with us, uh, Christina, what was your biggest takeaway from being on this trip? Oh my gosh, you guys, this was, ah, I'm just like, I'm so fired up. So I'm Christina Trey, Presidential Diamond. I've been in for 12 years and I am like, I'm on so much fire. Like I just can't even like control it. I'm just, I came home and I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to do? We have to do this. I have to do this. Like, what am I going to do? So I'm going to start by saying that I went to this event super vulnerable and I will also preface, I'm very solidly read. So to be vulnerable is very hard for me. I don't like emotions. I don't like crying. I don't like talking about any of that stuff. And I'm hoping I'm not going to cry in this because this was like a really emotional time for me. 
um, I went in very vulnerable and just like, I went in with asking the question of myself, like a vision of like, what am I supposed to do here? Like, why am I still here? Like, I fully believe in the company. I believe in my team. I believe in the products. I believe that God put me here. Like, like I am forever a lifer, but I just like, feel like we've kind of heard like people talking like they're wise and, you know, like this is going to sound so stupid, but what, first of all, when I first started, I was living off of food stamps and WIC. like I was poor as poor could be. I had a baby at home. Like at that point, my why was to be able to get off food stamps and WIC, and that's what I needed. And then it was bring in enough money to, to be, be a stay at home mom. And then I wanted to like I want to buy my own Louis Vuitton bag and then it was to, like buy a bigger house and and all the things I wanted to do whether it's materialistic or or my time or whatever and I'm like at this really weird point in my life um that and if you guys can hear me my connection says it's unstable is it good yes okay um and so I am like at this weird stage in my life where all of my kids are gone at school and I'm a baby my youngest is five. My oldest is almost 15. And I'm like at home and I'm like, the time management thing is like such an eye opener because you guys, I remember working my business full time, working as a bank teller and finding a way to make it to double diamond. And then all my kids are at school and I'm like, what is my purpose? Like, what am like, what, why am I here? Like, how am I going to find my time and manage it to be able to make this work? Like in a way that I know I need to grow my business. And so I'm like, I went into this like week with just vulnerability. Like, God, just speak to me. Where am I supposed to be? How am I supposed to continue? Like, what am I supposed to do? And there were so many takeaways, but I think the biggest thing for me was um, cut the rope, like get rid of things that are holding me and hindering me from what I'm good at. And I, just like everyone said, like, when you feel like you're not, you're, you're trying to be somebody different because you feel like you're too much. You feel like you, you are too outgoing. You're too red. You're too whatever. And I freaking love in-person like rap events, coffee dates, sipping samples. Like that is my jam. I am good at that. Picking up the phone and calling, meeting people, FaceTiming. Like I'm very good at that. And I like that. I'm a people person. And you guys, how ironic, like now in my season of life, I have all day long, like all my kids are gone. And I'm like sitting here, like, what do I do? What do I do all day? And I'm like, duh, Christina, you go out and talk to people. You set up coffee dates, you get wraps of people, you do what you're good at because that was the gift you were given. And so like, I was getting kind of frustrated to be honest the whole weekend. I'm like, okay, God, like I'm asking for you to like speak within me. Like, what do you want? And I was walking down into our room or back to our room and I was sobbing my eyeballs out. Like, I hope nobody ever saw me do that because I was like sobbing hysterically. Like I couldn't catch my breath and my girls were with me and they're like, it's okay. This is vulnerability. I'm like, but I hate vulnerability. I don't want to do this. And it was just like, there wasn't like a, like something that somebody said. It was just like a moment where I was like, oh, I just want to be here so bad. And I just want to figure out why I'm here. And it was like, it just hit me. And then Ashley Mayfield comes walking down the hall and here I'm like, oh my God, I'm bawling my eyeballs out. And she prays over me. And she's like, like, we just chatted for like just a second. And she's like, let me just pray over you. I'm like, okay. And I start crying more. And I get back to the room and I text my husband. I'm like, this is embarrassing. Everybody see me cry. I like, this is so stupid. And I just kept saying, this is so stupid. This is so stupid. This is so, and everyone's like, it's fine. You're just being vulnerable. And I think it was exactly what my soul needed. Like I needed to be away from being a mom of four to be vulnerable. Like I just needed a moment to be like, okay, Christina, you have the time in the world. You have nothing holding you back. You just need to get your ass to work and get to a time management and stick to something because you know, you've done it once, you know, you can do it again. And it's simple little tasks. Everyone has said it. It's simple, little repetitive tasks that lead you to something bigger. And so like, I, I got home and I was just like, okay, God, so this is like what you wanted me to like hear. Like, and you know, when you're like asking for the Lord to speak within you, like you're thinking it's going to be like this, like, you know, a beautiful magical thing, or maybe it's nothing. And you're like, okay, so is this what you wanted me to hear? Is this not what you wanted me to hear? And I just like sat here and I was like, okay, so I kind of know like why I'm here. Like I needed to open up and be vulnerable. 
And then I went even further and it like hit me yesterday. I was, I had a total R and R day. My kids are gone. I laid on the couch all day just to like recoup and just think. And I just like felt this like abundance of feeling over me. And that was like what I had been hoping for the whole time I was gone. And it was this, it was that the purpose of me being here today is because there are moms that have never, I have like goosebumps saying this, have never experienced being able to be home with one child full-time. I have been like so blessed abundantly and exceedingly to be home with all four of my kids their entire lives. Like how freaking cool is that? Like, it doesn't matter about the money. None of that matters because I've made a lot of money in this business, y'all. And I've made very little in this business. I have been top income earner, not top. Like I have been through all of it and I have never given up. I have been in the freaking trenches. I have been at the top. I've done all the things. And at the end of the day, none of that matters to me more than my babies. Like none of that. And so the fact that like, I'm sitting here and I just like have goosebumps. Just, I just, I can't believe like I've never had this like aha moment where it was like, you are with all four of your kids. You have been there every waking moment of their life. And some people don't even get that opportunity. And so that like got me even thinking more. And I'm like, there are moms that need me. Like they literally need me to tell them about this opportunity. They don't care about the money. Maybe they care about the time. And so that is like where my heart is. Like, I'm just like, I need to tell every mom, I need every mom to be able to experience this. And maybe there's, there's college kids that are not moms yet, but maybe someday they want to be, or they're looking at their future, or they can work this business while building their career or whatever it is. But like, for me, I can't look left and right about what other people are doing and why they're here. I can look why I'm here. And I'm here because I've been blessed to be with my four children. And that means I need to share that gift because that's what I have been able to do. And so aside from all of like the money and the ranks and the whatever, I just feel like after when he was like, Mark was like, cut the rope. It's like, stop worrying about. um, And I think Caitlin said this too, like the scripts and the, all of that's great. Y'all like, I'm not saying that it's not good because it all is and appreciative of everybody pour their heart and souls into scripts. And it's important. But for me, like I'm able to go out and have coffee dates. I'm able to get wraps on people. I'm able to pick up the phone. My kids are all gone all day long. And I need to use what I've been given to be able to tell more people about this. And so I'm just so thankful that I was able to be there to finally like get a vision of and to be vulnerable. Because if you are red, being vulnerable is so hard because you sometimes feel like you shouldn't have emotions and things because you're just like, I gotta be a badass. I gotta like make the money. I, you know, like blah, 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 blah. And for me, I'm like, I didn't realize how much of that I needed to have more of that like vulnerability in. And I think that's a blessing. It's such a blessing that I can have that part and that piece into my business and to be able to share that with more people. So I'm so fired up. And after hearing everybody talk, I just am like even more excited. And I just think we have such great corporate team and the vision that they're casting right now with all of the new corporate people is fire. And the last thing I'll say, and then on this is I was with um, Kenzie out on like in the morning, having coffee at the beach. And like, again, I've been in for 12 years. I have seen so many changes and I was like, I miss the OGs. And I told her that. And she's like, I know. And, and then I was like, but I trust your dad. Like I literally trust your dad and your name and your family's name is all over this entire company. And if at any point in time, they felt like this was not the right choice, we have to trust and have belief that this would not be happening then. And change is hard and it's uncomfortable, but we grow and more uncomfortable. And so I just feel such peace and such calmness that everything is setting us up for our next massive movement. And y'all just need to be ready because if you are not doing the things that everybody is saying, success leaves clues and you need to do what they're saying and not just like listen, but you need to do the actions. And so we are rooting for everybody. We are cheering everybody on. We're one team, one mission, and we just want everybody to have mass success. So I'm cheering you guys on. Dang, that was so good. I feel anyone else have just like chills this whole time. I'm like, my jaws just like open. This is so good. Um, Christina, thank you for, thank you for sharing. You're amazing. And yes, we are all like, we're just, I'm just so fired up. So we're going to move right on to the next. We've got Melissa, Melissa, 
Can you ask to unmute? I think I see you there. Yes, you should be good. Hi. Hi. What was um, your biggest takeaway? Oh my gosh, so many things. I'm like literally in my bathroom floor hiding from my two-year-old right now, but like just kind of going off of what Christina was just saying, like just being in this business and being a mom gives you so the biggest gift ever, like even more than money, because even if he goes to bed at 11 o'clock tonight, like we can sleep in tomorrow. I don't have to wake up and go to a job. And just having that flexibility as a mom is just like so crazy. Like that wasn't even in my notes, but as you were talking, I was like, I'm literally on my bathroom floor hiding from my kid, but it's okay because of this business. But kind of going off of what Mariah and Courtney were saying, I also had a conversation with Ryan who was absolutely amazing. And I was telling him about my pen. I, even before we left, I was talking to Jade and I said, I feel like something is missing, but I didn't even like really know what it was until I spoke to Ryan and he kept talking about community. And it's, it's the communities that we get to build through our social medias that then cultivate into our business and then being in Punta Cana, it works is literally the best example of how to build a community because seriously, it gives me chills just talking about it. Like when you're surrounded by everyone that's in it works in the corporate team and all every all the distributors, like you just feel a sense of community and just like being at the events, the dinners, the parties, the pool parties, the trainings, you just, we have the best example of how to build a community because it works, did it, and has built one for us. And us just getting to cultivate our own communities within our social media, social media accounts, and then our team pages and our teams and our own retreats. And then these retreats, it's just, it's literally everything. And then just like Courtney was saying, when you like think of something and then you keep seeing the same car, the same car. So Ryan was talking to me about community. And then the book I started reading this morning was all about cultivating community. And then the Zoom I was on earlier was all about building uh, a community. And I really think that is just like going to be my focus next. Like, just like Christina was just saying, like, there's so many moms that need what we have. And now being a mom, I just like, I literally makes me want to cry thinking of moms leaving their babies because I could never do that. And I would, I would literally die before I did that. It's just, we have the best gift and we can cultivate communities with people who are just like us, who don't want to leave their babies or want to travel the world or whatever it is. So building a community, like I think I've said community like 500 times in the last minute, but that was the number one word that stuck out to me throughout the whole um, trip and then also coming home. And then one more thing, like um, I think someone else said it too, but like getting your spouse to an event, like we felt so spoiled as a couple, which normally like it's me doing like the, it works things, but getting to bring him and, and him talking to other husbands and boyfriends and stuff in the pool. And he told me this one conversation that he had, um, in the pool like with other men. And he was like, I don't even care what Melissa has to do to get us to this next trip. Like, this is freaking awesome. Like, this, we are, like, so well taken care of. And I feel like sometimes, like, your spouse might not see everything that you're doing because it looks like we're just on our phones all the time. Like, sometimes I literally look like Gollum in the, in the corner of the room, just, like, texting on my phone. I'm like, oh, we're going to play. And then he's like, okay, like, okay. Like, but then bringing your spouse and them getting to see this huge vision that is so hard for sometimes them to see because they're not like in the it works like chats or in the team pages or like in everything it set him on fire too and he wants to now help with the business and he he sees bigger dreams for like our family so I just think that that's such a cool cool part and he's always been supportive he's been in conference and stuff but being on a trip like this that's different than conference that's more like rewarding you for your efforts and just getting to be so up close and personal with our corporate team and 
really getting more time to mingle with people and meet other people um, and just honestly feel spoiled. Like I felt so spoiled the whole trip and I feel so rejuvenated. Even, even my boyfriend feels rejuvenated. He said like being at his job the past couple of days, he feels more lifted after just hanging out with so many more, so many like-minded people and just our company and just everything. So I mean, my, one of my number one takeaways also was do whatever you have to do to get to that next trip that they announced, because it's going to give you a fire that like nothing else can, and it's just going to rejuvenate you and invigorate you. And I mean, I just feel honestly better than I felt in like the last two years leaving that trip. And that's all I have to say. (laughs) so good and it's so true like getting your spouse to an event it's uh it's game changing so good melissa thank you so much and uh (laughs) all right um okay heather i believe we got heather up next and uh i'm so 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 excited to hear your biggest takeaway heather i'm gonna find you there we are i think i can ask you to unmute and i'm gonna switch through you cannot move a video while people are spotlighted what does that mean Heather, <laughs> can you hear me? I can hear you. I can't find you though. What was your big <laughs> takeaway? Okay. Hey guys. So, um, we just got home today. We're struggle busting over here. Like it's, it's no joke. Like it's bad. Um, I love everybody's like, Hey, Scotty wanted to share real quick. I love it. Cause we just got off the topic of like hubbies and stuff. And so Scotty was like, I want to see something real quick. I'm like, I only got like six, seven minutes. So don't take up my I'll time. My, I'll make my quick. Hey, okay. So here's the thing, like being in this business for 10 years, like with her, it's one of those things where it's always it's always a privilege and an honor to be able to go to events. Um, <laughs> hey, there's Brett. Um, it's, but it's one of those things where being in this business for so long, there are so many husbands that I've yet to meet, boyfriends, whatever it is. And it's always exciting for me to be able to meet other husbands, other significant others, whatever it is, whoever's supporting um, the wife, their wife at that, that time, you know, and then kind of to get their mindset to see where they're at. So being able to go to this, go to the Dominican Republic with her, uh, being her guest, because realistically, she could have took somebody else. I mean, she could have taken another one of her distributors, could have ran a contest, whatever it was, but she took me, which I'm super honored for. And it was great to meet some of the other husbands and see kind of how they are with her, with their significant others, knowing that we are like-minded, knowing that we are here for them, um, here for the wives, here to support them in any way shape or form whether it be with family whether it be a business whatever it is so conference like conference is it like you go to conference because that is just another thing to help drive business for wives well and the next thing like if you guys are watching this right now and you're like i need to get my hubby on board then um and i love amber put it in the chat you guys don't try to convince your hubbies Mm -mm. to go show them that you have a desire for them to go um i love amber that like touched me like to the core um and that's what i did with him back in the day was just you know tell him how important it was for for me for him to see the culture and i know what you guys are all doing right now all of you already have excuses in your head well i can't my husband is the one that watches the kids you guys i had a tribe literally i had to figure out a tribe to get our kids to a and b and c and d and so if you pray on it and you just say it's going to happen it's going to happen for you and him to get there um anything else before no No. whoever's in this like meeting or or anything else just 329 of your newest friends just keep doing (laughs) what you're doing keep showing your husbands that you are here for them you are here for yourself you're here for the family keep doing the things you're doing they'll get on board they'll catch on don't try to convince them this should not be a convincing game this should literally just be you showing them look this is important to me make it important for you so Aww. love you guys bye guys thanks Ben. welcome okay um okay just a couple things i know he wanted to speak but um you know i i uh christina said it kind of too like you guys i've been in for 10 years so it's a little bit like I trust Mark and I trust the company, but I needed to see the new vision. Like I was, I'm one of those, you guys, where all these new changes are coming in and I'm not against it, but I, I'm like, 
a confused mind says no, that's probably the blue in me to where I was like almost frozen. I was kind of stuck like, okay, this is exciting. Right. So let me, let me let it marinate and soak in. And then I get to go to Punta Cana and, and you guys, there was a training there, you know, like we got to be, we had a three hour training one day and we just got to hear their belief, hear their excitement, catch their vision, you know, at the dinner party and the welcome, welcome their night. And I just needed, like, I needed that like belief again, you know, not that I didn't trust them, but I just wanted to, I just wanted to see it and hear it from my own eyes. Um, so that was really cool. Um, you guys, I got to meet so many new people, new people that have been in for a short amount of time. And I got to meet people that have been in for the, for years. Do you guys know I've never met Jocelyn Yates? We've been in literally like the same amount of time. I had never met Melissa before. Um, Tessie Carter, Barb Hauser, like, I literally met these people for the first time, but we've never spoke before. We see them across the room and it was so great to um, hear that. And like everybody shared tonight, it was so great to um, hear everybody else's struggles. And I know that sounds weird. I'm sure you guys are thinking like, well, oh, you guys are all rich. Why are you guys struggling like that? You know, no. Okay. We're not rich yet. Some of us are, but I'm not yet, but I will be. But it, I came from an organization, you guys, where we didn't share um, the struggles of your uplines. And, um, so I always felt like, well, if it, if it wasn't working for me, then I was doing something wrong. Yes. Rich on life. Um, I love that Courtney. Um, but I always felt like there was something wrong with me. And instead, instead of uplines in my past being vulnerable, like we're doing and what we've learned from our community in Punta Cana, like there's a mosquito in here. Hope I didn't bring it back with me from Punta. Um, but um, I just love that. I love hearing, you know, that some people that are top income earners on the company, you guys haven't had promotions on their team in a really long time. Well, I hadn't either. So I was thinking I'm a bad leader. Something wrong with me. I just don't have it in me anymore. I don't share vision good enough anymore. What is wrong with me? And then when I hear a top income earner that's saying that she's been struggling too, I literally was like, oh my gosh, it's not just me. It's not just me. If you're struggling at some point, then I feel so much better about myself, okay? So just know that, but I'm not giving up. It's not, it doesn't make me think there's anything wrong with this company or the products or the comp plan. It just shows me that there's peaks and valleys in this business. Um, and so I just love that. And then you guys, my last thing I wanted to share with you guys, for those of you that had the most FOMO you've ever had. For those of you that were down on yourself watching this going, I should have been there. I could have been there, but I didn't make it um, right before um, COVID. So I think it was 2019. Yeah. We launched the Margaritaville trip. Okay. And I was going, I was running. I was so excited. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I literally just gave up. I gave up. I was like, ah, I'm probably too far away. I'm probably not going to earn a spot anyways. And this was like halfway through it, halfway, like halfway through it. I was like, I probably won't make it. And I literally slowed down. I slowed down on my business. I didn't even go for the, the, the trip. Um, and when we sat there in 2020, right before COVID at conference, and they let those names roll out, even though I knew my name wasn't up there, I literally lost my SHIT. I literally cried my eyes out like a big baby in front of everybody in that arena because I was so disappointed in myself. I was so mad. I was so mad that I didn't earn that trip. I had earned the trips before that. I met my best friends, you know, that are in this business with me, um, sideline wise. And I was so mad at myself. And I literally said, I'm never going to miss a trip again. I'm never going to miss a trip again. And I'm sure that's what you are seeing and hearing right now from a lot of people is do not miss a trip. And I hope you guys have that same belief that I had after I missed that trip that you're, I hope right now after tonight, even if you didn't, I hope right now that you're going, yep, nope, not going to miss a trip. Instead of having that fear and doubt in your head right now saying, well, there's still, there's something special. You guys, I have no bra on right now. I'm a hot ass mess. I am on this zoom. I, none of us are perfect. Okay. Anybody can get there. No matter your rank, you guys, uh, two or three rubies earned a spot, uh, maybe more, but I think it was two or three rubies earned a spot to this. Okay. It doesn't matter your rank. It doesn't matter how long you've been in. It doesn't matter how much money you're making. If you have the belief and you have the drive and the fire and you do the things you will earn your next trip. Okay. So that's it, you guys. So I'm so glad I've been on here tonight. And so far I'm just fired up. You guys are firing me up and I was there.
Heather, thank you so much for sharing. You're just amazing. And I hope I was, I was going to say like, I don't know if it's okay. I share this, but I just want to add this really quick before we, we wrap it up with Miss Amber Parker. But one of the, I think biggest things that made me emotional about meeting you, like I'm not meeting you, like seeing you again, Heather, but was like hearing that Heather is so one team, one mission, you guys, she hosts a power hour for like literally, literally the entire company. And if that does not tell you her heart, you know, I, I don't know what's like, there is just some quality, great people in this company. And Heather, like, I just, I, I was just very emotional hearing that just because I'm like, dude, you don't have to do that. And you do. So, um, you're amazing. Thank you. Dude. Thank you. Um, okay. Well, I think there, there is no better person than Miss Amber Parker to wrap us up with this zoom. Now I got to scroll through and find Amber Parker. Um, because I see you, Amber, what was your biggest takeaway from this, uh, from this trip? All right, there it is. I was like, Jack, you have to mute me. <laughs> Um, you guys, first of all, I want to say thanks for taking your time out. I know many of us had multiple zooms tonight. And so just thank you. This, this time does not go wasted. These are investments into your business. And, um, I, I have two things that I'm going to share. So just bear with me. I'll try and be quick, but I'm, I'm not going to cut the point because the point is what you guys need to hear. Lenisa shared a story about, um, that really hit home. One of my biggest takeaways is you guys, the event was great. Don't get me wrong. Like, but I can take myself on a trip. And, and, and I want to share two things. Number one, anyone who says like, I'm never missing a trip again. I'm never missing a trip again. Why aren't you fighting that hard to take your family on a trip? Why aren't you fighting that hard to take this success bonus and earn it and put your, and your husband on a trip, you and your girlfriends on a trip. Okay. So don't wait for another trip because that should never be your driving force. It should be the icing on the cake, right? I should never wait for a bonus to work today. I should work today and get the icing on the cake later. Okay. So that was just a little like, wait, let me, let me hear that again, because I saw how many people were fired up and how many people were actually had FOMO about missing this trip. I'm glad you missed the trip. I'm glad you are having this FOMO because so long as if you are an incredible leader and an incredible person, you're committed in this business sister, I believe that she will take this time and say, you know what? I've never been on a trip with my husband. And by December 31st of 2022, dang it, I'm going to take us on a trip because I'm going to earn a success bonus. And now I'm going to pay for it. Okay. But don't really, truly, I'm, I'm not glad you missed the trip. I'm actually hot. My heart hurts. There's so many people, <laughs> you guys know that, but truly, truly, truly think about this. You guys, you are the CEO of your business. Yes. The company has these incentives, but you get to decide what to do with your business. Don't wait for somebody else to give you the roadmap and the prize and the icing on the cake. You build your own freaking cake, man. Okay. Okay. The second thing, Lenisa shared a story. And, you know, I, this whole zoom, I, I kept, I keep hearing community, 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 and it's like, you guys zoom community is great, but it will never, ever, ever come close, even close in the slightest bit to the community that you create around your local team and your local people. And by local, I mean, 10 hours as a leader, I'm willing to drive 10 plus hours to go meet my team. When was the last time you drove one hour to go meet with the distributor that you signed up last month? You are aching and asking for community and you have it. And yet you're not taking that time that one night a week away from your family. You did it to be on a zoom. What if you did it to go be with them in person to just go have drinks and salsa? Okay. That's going to create that community. So when she, she had asked somebody and she says, how many people are like really good at building belly to belly and like face to face. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, me hundred percent. I love it. Because you guys, this is the business we're in is in the people business. I remember years ago, people would say, if you don't like people, I don't think this business is for you. And the reason why we don't like people is because we've never had people treat us right. But what if you could be the person that treated people right and change the perspective for them? How many of you have, have, have softened your hearts since you've been in this business? And you're like, I actually thought I didn't need friends, but now I have a lot of friends. Okay. So 
the other part of the flip side of that is I'm like, yeah, I freaking love people. And these last two years have been absolute hell isolating all of our lives and us trying to be like, please just buy from us. Please join our team. Please like, let me show you the value of a, of another boomerang on a zoom of another high five of another 37 and 600 people on a, on a zoom that by the way, they probably are also working remotely. Or they're also like, I'm already with my kids enough. I don't want to spend every night on a zoom with my kids, but they would spend two or three nights a week away from their kids to build a business because you're willing to get in person. And so I have always, 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 always said, you guys soul to soul connect face to face will build faster and further than online ever will ever will. Okay. And, and I am proof of that because my very first distributor that I ever signed up 10 years ago, Kaylin Freeman, 10 years ago, you guys, she was a complete stranger today. She's still active in this business. She, my very first distributor I ever signed up and why, because I built community, I built culture, but I built a friendship. We are in the business of making friends. I get paid to make new friends and help my friends make new friends. That's what I get paid to do. Right. And so when Lanisa talked about these red bottom shoes and that her, and I'm going to share the analogy, I'm going to briefen it up, but she said, you know, if me and you, if me and Nicole, we walk into the store and we're like, we both want red bottom shoes and the lady comes out and she holds, you know, the red bottom shoes. I just have Birkenstock. So here we go. So, you know, she holds the red bottom shoes and they're both the same size, but you know, Nicole's five, six, and I'm five foot on a good hair day. And so if we're, you know, we probably don't have the same size feet and she hands them both the same size shoe and they walk out and they don't ask any questions and they just got a sale. And she's like, sweet, I got a sale. And they walk out and they put the shoes on and they start walking and they start shopping and they start running their race and they, you know, they start their business. And all of a sudden one of them can't walk anymore because her feet hurt so bad. And the other one ran out of her shoes because they were too big. And in this business, we have been, and I'm just going to say it, and y'all kind of disagree with me or agree with me. I'm not here for that. It doesn't really matter. I want to give you guys a tool. We are trying to fit the same shoe size on every single person that comes into this business. We are trying to give every single business, every single person that comes into your business, the same script, the same post, the same, this, the same, that, the same, this, the same, that. And it is actually absolutely demolishing your business. Because what works for me, what shoe size fits me might be host to post. What shoe size fits her might be in person during her lunch breaks. What fits for him might be only Saturdays and Sundays. And so we have to, as we're building this business, you guys, one, ask questions, get to know people, find out what shoe size they want. What size, what mile do they want? Do they want $200? Do they want $500? If somebody comes to me and says, Amber, and, and this happens a lot, my sweet friend, Lindsay, she said, Amber, I need $1,000 in my first month. Can you help me get that? And I said, how bad do you want to work? But if I, if I came and I said, yeah, all you got to do is get up 10 hours to post a day. And like, that would be great. And for sure, I can get you $1,000 a month. No, that's like giving her the wrong size shoe. But how many of us are like, Hmm. I actually don't know how to make a thousand dollars in a month because what I'm doing isn't producing the results that I want. What you're doing isn't wrong. You're, the shoe size is great. Host to post is great. Scripts are great. One-on-one's great. Online parties are great. Messenger parties are great. What is the tool that we're using to build our business? But often you guys, as a leader, I have to know all of them. I have to know how to measure feet, right? I have to know how to give them the right shoe and the right tool. But how many of us are like, I don't have any runners, but here you are mass recruiting, but that's not how we enroll. I never made it to the top of the company signing more than anywhere. No more in my first two and a half years did I ever sign more than six distributors in one month. And I made it to ambassador in two and a half years. What did I do? You guys want to know? I will tell you, I keep it so simple. It's stupid. I sign up four customers and three distributors every single month. The same old steps of success that we had years ago, we have today. I sign up my four customers and I sign up my three distributors. And guess what? I teach those, those three distributors to do what? Sign up their four customers and sign up their three distributors. And guess what I did 10 years ago? The same dang thing. But the difference, you guys, is the old steps of success paid me 
$300. The new one pays me $1,250. Same work. Follow me, same work. But how did I do it so fast then? Face to face to face, coffee appointment, wrap to wrap to referral. Now, I'm going to be taking my business on a whole different level than a lot of people are over this next year and a half. And people are either going to catch on and they're going to be like, dude, this is it. This is what I've been waiting for. Or people are going to be like, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm not willing to do that. But I'll tell you two things. Those that show up and that made it to this trip are willing to do things that no one else is willing to do. If you want success, you have to be willing to do something you've never done before. You have to be willing to look at the sacrifice that you're making as an investment. And it will pay you like an investment, which is long-term, okay? And so the, that's like one of the biggest takeaways that I had was Lenisa and the red bottom shoes. The red bottoms are not, not, shoot, you're trying to give somebody a heel and they're like, give me the Birkenstock. Where are my Birkenstock people at, okay? Well, if you know, you know, but it's like, you're trying to give them a tool in a business without even qualifying them, without even telling them what we actually do. And that you actually do get meant to make phone calls. How do you feel about talking with people? Uh, I don't really like people. Okay, well, maybe you should be a customer for three months, okay? Are you willing to tell people no? I gotta put my shoe back on, okay? Are you willing to tell people no? But the other thing, you guys, is what brings you joy? What brings me joy is people. I love people. Like, more than anything right next to my kids and my family, it's people. And I love to change lives. And I have, I have changed thousands and thousands of lives. Even if they're not in the business, I believe that I was a part of their transformation at some point in their life. I can count on multiple hands, people that have joined my business, watched my marriage, gone to me and Josh for marriage counseling, left the business, and still message me today and say, because of that one dinner, that one appointment, that one margarita, that one time you sat with me and my husband, it saved our marriage. Forget about the business. Who are the people that are aching for what we have? It is more than products, you guys. It is so much more than, pro than products. The products are just the icing on the cake. When you set out to not only change your life in the whole trajectory of your legacy, that is when God's going to put people in front of you. He is going to slap you up the side of the head and say, are you ready now? There's people that I've called you, Melissa, that I've called you, Tara, that I've called you, Candace, you, Kelly, you, Ashley. I have called you specifically to change and you're not doing it. You're not doing it because you think, who am I to make an impact? Who am I to, I just want to give everyone the same thing. And I want to win the lottery. And I will tell you, when you take an hour, an hour to launch your new distributor in person, make that investment, send the gas. I, you guys, I spent $700 in the last 24 hours on gas alone, not even building my business. That's me landing, going and picking up my kids and coming home. $700. If I'm willing to do that for my family, what if I just took 10% of that and turned it around into my business? If I'm, if you're willing to go out on a Friday night to go party with your friends, why aren't you willing to do that for your business? If you're willing to go out and get a, a tattoo piece, uh, eat out by yourself, eat with your husband. What if you stopped taking your kids to McDonald's for three months and took that same amount of money and invested it into your business, into your people, you guys, that will pay you so much further, farther. I don't know. English doesn't matter way out that way. Right. It'll take you beyond where you're at right now. But I don't know about you, but I can feel that women, especially our souls are aching for community and connection. Amen. It's aching. You guys, it's aching. We've been craving it. And we all think I'm the only one that needs that. No, you're not. There are people that are watching you right now that want and would give anything. If you said, meet me at coffee at two o'clock. So all this to say, that was one of my biggest takeaways. And I was like, I have lost my people. I have gotten so far onto social media because that's what everyone's doing. I've gotten so far into post to post because it's easy. It's repetitive. It's mindless. You guys, they're all great tools, 
but I have the greatest tool. You, Sarah, have the greatest tool. Brianna, you have the greatest tool and that's your heart. It's your heart. It's your soul. It's your passion. It's why you're doing this. And only you can bring people in. If we're all posting the same things and we're all doing the same exact things and we're all wearing the same exact shoe, why would anyone choose me over Cassie, over Nicole, over Melissa, over Candace? Why? Why would they do that? But if you go out, Lisa, and you say, I'm different. This is my story. I'm the CEO. These are the things I struggle with. These are the things that I desire. Do you? They will come along and long and join you. So I want to share this real quick, you guys. And, and again, everything that I ever say, I will back up with facts over and over and over again. And nobody will ever take it away from me. Period. The end. Okay. So speaking about how 2020 stole our souls and our desires and our heart and all the other things, I have to plug in my computer real quick and then we're done. You guys, I promise I won't be much longer, but if you need to go, don't go. Um, so talking about what brings us joy, when was the last time? And, and I don't know about you guys, but like, I hate shopping now. I don't even want to be out in, in, with, with people. I hate people. Right. That's what we tell. I'm like, I get anxiety. Da, 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 da. I don't know where to go. I don't even know what to shop. You guys, I used to be a shopaholic. I used to go out to shop to recruit. I literally be like, I literally get a new top to go talk to people and recruit people. I literally get to go eat dinner. So as soon as I exchange cash with somebody, I can recruit someone. Everything in my life brought me joy because everything in my life revolved around this business because this business is my legacy. This business is my family. This business is my life. This business is my spiritual growth. And then 2020 happened. And we isolated and we isolated and we isolated and it became more foreign to hug people and to touch people and to pay for their coffee. And it became more and more foreign to buy someone's groceries behind you. It became so foreign to leave a dollar bill somewhere, an extra tip here or there. It became so foreign. And so I was telling my husband, you know, we, we traveled the country for those two years. Thank you. Oh my gosh. I have a new little customer. I just got a notification. Okay. Um, so this is what's wild, you guys. So as I was telling Josh, like we travel the country and nobody talks about the grieving process when you're done. The whole trip was phenomenal, but nobody talks about how alone you feel. You went every day with new adventures every day with, dude, I was thriving. I could do anything I wanted. I could work my business in an hour. And I had so much hours in the day. I was done by one o'clock. We were out one to four every single day, doing a new adventure, a new trail, hiking, biking, doing whatever we wanted. And I had content because why I, I lived my life. I did things that bring me joy. And then, so look at you. When was the last time you did stuff that brought you joy? When people say, I don't know what to post about what the hell are you doing all day? What are you doing? Like, do you even do things that bring you yourself joy? So I told my husband, I said, I have not been to a rodeo in one year. That is unacceptable to me. Does anyone else love rodeos? I'm like, it's just bulls. People are getting bucked off and a whole bunch of poop and it smells like crap, but I really love it. It like lights me up. It gives me joy. I just love it. And I said, you know what, babe? Like, I really want to go do the things that bring me joy, which is a rodeo. So we find one about 45 minutes North in this college town. And I said, we're going to go. And of course, going back, I'm like, well, where was my content? You guys, again, only so many times can you do this with your phone and be like, and be like, do you want to join us? Do you want to join us? This is great, man. Come on. People are so sick of it. Why did everyone ache and crave and miss this, miss this retreat? Because why in the depths, your soul wanted a hug. Your, your soul wanted new people. Your soul wanted a new friend. And so I go to this rodeo and I prayed and I said, God, bring me the people again. I just want people. And you got to be careful what you ask for because God's not only going to give you what you ask for, but he's going to give you exceedingly and abundantly more than what you can think or imagine. And I know what I can imagine. And that's why it's scary. Amen. I know what I can imagine. I know what I can imagine for you, Caitlin, you, Tammy, you, Alicia. I know what I can imagine for you. And I want you to go beyond that. So I show up to this rodeo and I, of course, I'm like, I got to look cute because like, I want to take a picture, but everyone's watching me and I feel stupid. Like this is dumb. I'm not an influencer, but I really want this picture. And I feel cute because I'm wearing bell bottoms and like, they're coming back and I'm a nineties child. So we like are, are used to this and we're, I'm ready for this season. Like I am here for this. I know how to roll those things to get them, not get them wet. Okay. And like, <laughs> some of you are like, we don't even know what bell bottoms are. That's okay. So we'll, we'll talk to you later, but 
I was at this rodeo and I took the picture and people were watching me. And the whole time I was like, you know what? What if somebody says, why are you taking a picture like that? Opportunity to tell them about what I get to do, right? And so we're sitting on this and it's open seating. We're sitting in this rodeo and you guys, I mean, I'm like, God is talking to me and I'm like, uh-uh, uh-uh, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. And I'm like, what do I say? How do I get into this conversation? They're, you know, they, they like had some drinks. They're, they're, maybe they snuck them in. Maybe they didn't. Um, and I was like, my kind of girls, there was like four of them right by me. And I was like, what am I going to say? Like, Hey, you should have brought one for me next time. Like, what's my, what's my tagline. Right. Like, I'm like, are we at a pickup line? Is this what we're doing? Yes. You guys, this is what we do. We want to build friendships. Then freak, you got to talk to people. And so the whole thing went by and I was like, oh my gosh, I just remember Stephanie Dunn saying that if I don't tell everyone that I meet about this opportunity, then I'm taking food off their table. I'm taking money out of their bank account and I'm not a taker. I'm a giver. So I better give this opportunity. You guys, when was the last time that you went out and you gave this opportunity to them? When was the last time that you shared what you have? You, your bills get paid by this? Sh shame on us for not sharing it and allowing other people's bills to be paid by this, right? Shame on us that, that we, we're fine. We get to be at home with our babies, but yet we're taking that opportunity away from somebody else because you're not opening your mouth. So the whole thing ends and truly one of the girls looked familiar. And so of course, shaking and feeling like I'm this 40 year old lady. And these are like 19 year old chicks. And I'm like, Oh, are they even going to like, want to talk to me? I'm their mother. They're probably going to be like, shit, we just got caught drinking all these beers, whatever they were drinking. And I, but again, you guys, the talk, the enemy wants to talk you out of it. And I, I, I sat there and I said, you look really familiar. First of all, you guys are so cute and you guys would absolutely kill it in the business that I do, but where are you from? And I immediately planted the seed and I turned it around into a relationship and they were like, oh my gosh. And I was like, you are so, you guys are like literally so cute and precious. And of course they like commented back, whatever. And I said, do you guys have Instagram and social media? And they're like, yeah, they all pulled out their phones so fast. You guys, they couldn't wait to add me on social media. This was September 11th, one month ago. And I messaged them all. And I said, once they followed me, I said, it was so nice to meet you. I'm so glad that we connect. I did not use a script. I did not send an automated message because so much as if we want an automated business, you're going to create a robot. And I'm sorry, but robots glitch. Robots don't show up all the time. But if I can create a genuine connection and a genuine relationship, that'll last forever. And all I did was I just, I knew I was going to plant that seed and there, I was going to let them watch me. But immediately then what did I do? I was like, crap, I have four new potential distributors. My story, my story, my story, my story, what's available, what's available. I'm going to watch them. And then I kept going. I didn't wait for them. And she messages me about a few months, a few weeks later, right before Punta Cana. And she said, Amber, I think I want to take the leap. And I didn't use a script. I used my voice. And she said, send me over the link. I'm going to join. I said, what if I wouldn't have done something that brought me joy? Like go to the rodeo. We get paid you guys to live our life. We get paid to be on adventures. And I sent her the link. This was right before Punta Cana and she didn't join. And so of course I was kind of grateful because I was like, I don't really have the time or bandwidth to train someone while I'm at Punta Cana. I land in JFK on my flight home. And she said, I took the leap. I'm so excited. I'm already diving into the E-suite and training. I haven't sent anything, nothing. And I want to share with you guys, everything that I have done with her has been absolutely automated, not automated. It's been authentic. And if you want an authentic business, then you must be authentic. You must stutter. You must learn and not know the products. You got to say, I don't know the answer, but let me figure it out. You've got to be willing to step outside that comfort zone. And she lives about 45 minutes away from her. And I remember hearing in that training that we heard 36 hours. Why do we need to launch people in 36 hours? You guys, I'm going a little bit over. I'm so sorry. Again, if you need to jump off, you need to jump off. But this is what God is just speaking. It's so important that we get to this point. If we don't take care of people in the first 36 hours, in the first 48 hours, because we're waiting for them to respond or we're waiting for their kids to come, you guys, we lose them, right? The show is called the first 48 hours on purpose, but why? Because if they can't catch the suspect in 48 hours, it dramatically decreases the case by up 90 plus percent. The same thing goes for our distributors. If you do not get to know their heart, their why, and share a vulnerable part of you, a vulnerable part of you. Do you hear me? There is a reason why you're doing this and they want to know the reason you need to say, I'm not feeling good today. 
You need to say that I am reaching for diaper money today. You need to be out there and sharing your vulnerable moment with them as a distributor in the business. I am not an ambassador to her. I'm a friend that she met at the rodeo. You are not a presidential to these people. You are not rubies to these people. You are a person that has a connection with them that they need, that you were called on purpose for a purpose in their life. And you just don't simply know the end yet. You know the beginning, but he knows the end in the beginning. And if you trust in him so much as you trust in yourself, you are going to be divine alignment with people that you're like, I had no idea. I had no idea. And so I reached out to her and I said, okay, shit. Well, this is the first person I'm going to launch. No scripts. We're going to do this. It's been five years, but oh my gosh, we're going to, we're going to give this a go. I'm going to go back to being authentic. Nobody is me. Nobody is me. Nobody is you. And so I said, Hey, I'm, I'm so excited for you. I know you live 45 minutes away on Thursday night. And everything in me was like, no, Amber, you're not feeling good. You're sick. Da da da. You're, you're, you just finished up this. I haven't seen my kids, all the excuses as to why I, I don't want to go meet in person on a Thursday night. I have a zoom. Okay. I have a zoom. And I turned around and I said, I said, I'm so excited to meet you. I love to meet up with people, especially if I can, and they're local within the first two to three days, just Thursday night at 6 PM work for you to, I, we can do coffee. I can come to your place. I'm willing to go to her. Why? Because when people come to us, they're more than likely not going to come. You get to go out there and here's what we're doing on social media. We're posting and we're posting and we're posting and we're posting and we're praying for people to come to us. We have to go to them. You will hit more targets when you shoot it directly, right? Versus trying to make an, a mask, trying to give everyone the same size shoe. Okay. So she says, all right. And I said, and the best part, I was like, those other girls that were with you that night, invite them over too. But if they can't come, it can just be me and you. And it's no big deal. We'll train. We'll, I'll bring some products that you can try. I'm really excited for you. She says, okay, I'll see if they want to come. She dives into some training. She makes her, I, I send, I send her as like, Hey, let's make our first post. She's like, I actually already have one drafted. Can, I'll, I'll just make it. And, and you can look at it. You guys, it was phenomenal. Why? Because it was authentic. It was authentic. All I said is share, share our story, share how we met at a rodeo, share what this is going to do for you. And she did it on her own. Why do you not feel equipped and capable of leading people in the same thing that we do every single day? Why do we not feel equipped to tell people and teach people authentically? So she makes this post, she gets so much love on it. And she, she's like, okay. And so I was like, Hey, tomorrow, what time do you want me to come up now? Mind you, I'm bringing my distributors that are local to me with me. They're coming with me. So I opened it up and I said, you guys can come to her launch party. And, um, if you want to come, go come with me and no big deal. Um, they are there to learn and you guys, that knowledge is priceless. It's the hour conversation that there and back, it's going to be them experiencing different conversations, different products, my knowledge about the products, having other people try products. And so all that to say, we're really excited. I'm going to go up there. And she's like, Amber, you know what? I actually am going to come down to St. George tomorrow for an errand that I've got to run. And so I literally at 7, 18 tonight, just got the text message. She says, update, we'll be coming down to St. George tomorrow night. I'm not sure what time, but I will keep you posted. I also am super excited. I will bring three of my girlfriends along with me. Three. Mark my word. This girl will have her three distributors signed up by tomorrow night. Because why? I know that when I'm in person, when I'm heart to heart, you can't deny the emotion. You can't deny the connection. You guys, it moves so much faster. This is how I built my business in two and a half years to ambassador. Just like this, it moves quicker. And I would rather spend all of tomorrow night away from social media and working with four people. And guess what? If one shows up, that one will sign. I will sign nine out of 10 people every time I'm with them. And how many host to post? This is wild. I see people and they're like, I had 250 hosts to post up this month and I signed up 22 customers. That's a really good rate. How exhausting. Wouldn't you rather send 200, have 200 conversations, in-depth, authentic conversations and share your story? Share your story about where you're going, not where you've been, where you're going. As if you, Cassie, started today. As if you, Melinda, started today. Where are you going? Brianna, where are you going, Kelly? Share your story, you guys. You are the best CEO for these people, not your upline, not your sideline, not me, you. 
But the, what I want to go back to is you guys don't have to be a slave to this business. You have to be a slave to your dreams. You have to be a slave to making sure that you get those red bottom shoes or those Birkenstocks, but that the right size fits in the right places. And you can have it all. You can have a fire business. You can have a passionate life. You can take this time. I, so I'm, I'm with, um, I'm with uh, Christina. I'm like, I have all day in the world. Why am I not out and about with my, with my team? Why am I not scheduling coffee appointments? So all that to say, we, me, myself, I, I don't care what you guys do, but I would really challenge you to come along with me is because sometimes I know what I'm doing. Sometimes I really don't, but I feel like in this one, I really do. I'm making a goal to get, uh, get in person with 10 people, 10 people this month. We have 15 days left. If I can meet with one person every single day, I will close 10 people in the next 15 days. But the best part is my soul will be filled. I will have passion again. I'm missing that connection with people. We're, we have to get back to that. And so how many of you, I want to know, would love to go meet up with people. You're like, I want to be a people person. I want to meet up with people. I want to close nine out of 10 in one hour. I want to close, take one night a week and get my four customers and my three distributors. Or do you want to work seven days a week? I want to work smarter, not harder. And when God said go, I went and I've never stopped. And until I'm done, I'm not finished. I'm not finished. I'm not finished. And neither are you. So let's turn this around. Find the passion, your first passion, you guys. If it's been host to post, stick with it, sister. If your first passion is social media, you're like, no, I'm good. I'm good. Then I promise I will honor you and you need to stay there. I, what I'm saying is do not, I'm not saying burn the ships. All right. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that you have to be a master at everything because you're going to have team that needs you to master them in the way that they are. And if they're social media, you need to know that. If they're TikToks, you need to know that. If they're in person, then you need to know that. Okay. All that to say, I'm really fired up. My business is already turning around. God's already changing things, you guys. And I'm freaking fired up that I go get to help. This has nothing to do with me. You guys, this is all about her because if I can, when I say, and I told her, I can teach you how to make $1,200 every single month. This month, I can teach you that. And can I? Yes. With four and three, four and three, four and three, and you build and you repeat and you build and you repeat. We are in a building business. We get paid to build people. Leaders aren't born, they're built. We stopped building leaders two years ago. We started building followers. And that's unfortunate because a lot of us has followers right now that are aching to be a leader. Oh, and I mean, figuratively, we all have followers on social media that are done following, but they want to lead with you. Invite them to lead with you. Invite them on your mission, your vision, and your values. Stay focused and anchored in where God's calling you. You're not finished. You're not finished. And you're not finished. That's all I have to say. Dude. Um, Amber, I just want to thank you for sharing that and like everything. And guys, I just like, I'm watching you guys watch Amber and obviously if you've never met Amber you hear her heart and she's so servant and I just need you in, like I just need to see it in the chat if Amber has personally like impacted your business or your life like you need you need to say it in the chat because dude I'm like listening and like you know man you're such a gift you've you've affected my my life in such a positive way I'm just so thankful for you and I'm uh yeah dude I love you so um I think this has been such an amazing Zoom and you guys, uh, we, will, we will see you at the next trip and uh, we're, we're cheering for you. We love you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Amber. And um, guys, I hope, I hope you got what you needed from this. This will be on YouTube tonight. So I love you guys. I appreciate you guys.